In this second concept video of the Let's Get Better Together series, we take a deeper look at the powerful idea. It helps with complex stroke production and imagination that will help your body to perform proper and consistent stroke every time. So, let's start. <laughs> Hello friends. Welcome to the new Level TT channel. Channel where all table tennis secrets are at one place. At the episode 4, we are talking about linear strokes and disadvantages of perpendicular hitting. Also, how to get feeling for the stroke when the hit is performed with inclined paddle. Closing animation is showing complex stroke dynamics for forehand active phase in 3D. That lesson is actually hard without further explanation. So we will prepare you with this concept. Let us explain generally used approaches of the forehand strokes. Linear strokes are performed usually only with forearm rotation over the ball. Shoulder rotation helps with guidance of the arm in such way that the energy is transferred to the ball in linear fashion. Body rotation is very small and forced. Arm joints experience too much stress. At the time of hitting, the body is in strong forehand posture. Any small adjustment changes stroke quality drastically. This means lot of errors during play. Tangent strokes use heavy rotation of the body and rigid arm structure as extension of the body. Reason is to create bigger radius when hitting the ball. This ensures bigger torque. Players often have different arm postures based on grip, stance and comfort zones. Body is parallel to the direction of the played ball at the time of hit. Some players use combination of both, but they are basically creating linear strokes with added rotation. This is not effective. Notice that there is only single axis where force is applied or combined for these two approaches. Also big problem for players using them is that they perform these strokes only with two-phase execution. Backswing and active phase. We actually need three. So we have backswing, locking and active phase. Remember it. Players usually compensate with pours before the stroke when the ball is rising. It is better to lock the dynamics of the ball with the forearm movement and your legs bounce like the ball. Your forearm need to be on circular path during whole stroke execution. If you use circular motion to guide a stroke, pours is very bad for you. Concept we are going to present on the next slide is used to understand and create complex but very smooth and consistent strokes. Complex stroke uses circular forces on two axes. This have so many advantages. At the illustrations, white dashed line represents general force created by arm joints. White solid line is showing force produced by body rotation. Now, after we explained all these things, we are presenting our cone on the rod concept. The cone is created by the rotation of forearm around elbow. This cone has inner hitting space inclined due to angle of the paddle in our hand. On the circle we have four points where one one of directions is always changed. Aim is to lock three paths to the rhythm of the incoming ball. Cone helps you with timing of backswing, locking and hitting due to points on the circle you are drawing with your forearm. Get back to the lesson 1, and now you will see that this part was skipped for a good reason. Rod is the main tool for delivering power and is actually easy to control. This rod movement is created by simultaneous rotation of body, weight transfer, and guiding the elbow upwards. This creates two main force components. Your body feels them both. Main idea is to let forearm traverse these circle points fluidly but consciously and focus only on the elbow limit positions first. Our goal is to move elbow from end of the backswing to the point of the start of the active phase. When active phase starts, elbow already pushes forearm directly to the point of the start of active phase. At that time, our forearm is already at the right starting position due its rotation. It just reversed direction towards the ball and is helping with snapping motion through the ball naturally. At the time of collision, these two forces we generated can be transformed by paddle angles into speed and spin. We can also adjust ratio of forces to change the placement of the ball. As you can see, we have three options for a ball redirection. 
we can adjust body rotation, elbow acceleration, and paddle angle at the time of impact. This gives us high consistency. It means that at any situation, you can find combination that delivers ball to the same place with the visually same movement. This is not the case for previous two approaches. One last advantage is that mastering this concept is actually teaching you four powerful strokes at once. Only difference is direction of rotation and the actual path on the circle where you hit the ball. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and we share more tips that will have huge impact on your overall game in the future. See you next time.